of you ask me all the time, you say, Mama Dr. Jones, how do you know so much about so many things? And I always tell you, I read it. So today we're going to go through, <laughs> I can't. Today we're going through a Reddit called r slash mom group say, and if you're new and you'd like to subscribe, subscribe for the period education, the sex ed, the talk about pregnancy, but not for the humor. I found this on a post where a mom was asking for advice on removing her own IUD. I took out my own Nexplanon implant. I thought I was gonna say IUD. This is a very different thing than taking out an IUD. They wanted to charge me $1,200 plus an eight hour drive to get it removed because I no longer had insurance and they were almost on the other side of Texas. So I sat down, got a brand new box razor, ice and bandages slash medical stuff. I cut my forearm in a slit and had my brother then girlfriend hold on to it while I pulled on it with vice grips. I had two other people take theirs out this way as well. The only reason I was comfortable doing it is because I've helped my dad sew fingers back on growing up, lol. I have no words. Y'all, I, I have no words. Is this real? Editing note, and I don't know why I didn't realize this until right the second, but what in the world is this person's family doing that they have the need to have their child help sew multiple people's fingers back on? Is this multiple fingers onto one person or multiple fingers from various people over time? I have so many questions. How I can be speechless and have so much to say at the same time is beyond me. I mean, obviously there's a lot to unpack here about the state of healthcare and reproductive healthcare in the United States. Nobody should have to drive eight hours and pay $1,200 to get their next plan on removed. That is asinine, but wow. Please don't do this. I'm just thinking of all the things that could go wrong. You could hit a major artery. You could hit a major nerve. You could pass out holding a razor blade and if you were bleeding, who knows? Sometimes they can be really deep. Sometimes they have scar tissue and they're really difficult to get out. I just would strongly advise against this. You are at risk of infection, bleeding, nerve damage, muscle damage, skin damage. If you do get it out and you have a big wound, how are you gonna fix it? Do you have suture? I have nothing else to add. Please don't do this. Comments tell her to trust her intuition. Tips on delivering at home unassisted against doctor's wishes. I've been in labor for two weeks, had a bad episode of bleeding at 29 weeks and again at 36 weeks with no answers. The goal was always to deliver at home but with the issues, no midwives feel comfortable assisting. Okay, if your doctor and home birth midwife are saying it's a bad idea to deliver at home, it's probably a bad idea to deliver at home. I mean, I, what else can you say? What are the risks I'm looking at here for baby and me? Bleeding at 29 weeks and at 36 weeks could be indicative of a placenta that's low lying, which could cause a massive hemorrhage, which could be potentially life-threatening for both the baby and the person who is hemorrhaging everywhere. What can we do to make it the safest experience? Go to the hospital, deliver where the experts, including a home birth midwife and a board certified ob -GYN have told you to deliver. That's what makes sense, right? How will we know if we really need to go to the hospital? I think it is really, really short-sighted if you've got a team of medical professionals who do this every day recommending against a specific thing. Maybe you should ask them, like, what are the risks? Why are you worried? What's going on up here? And the problem is that things usually go fine. It goes fine until it doesn't. And if you are the one that it doesn't go fine in, the percentage risk that you had of that happening doesn't matter anymore because you're the one that has to deal with those consequences for the rest of your life. Antibiotics or Greek yogurt, practically the same thing. For those who have had it, what did you do for bacterial vaginosis? Apparently the treatment is antibiotics, but that's what started this in the first place. BV is bacterial vaginosis. It is a overgrowth of a bacteria called Gardnerella. Yeast is an overgrowth usually of a fungus called Candida. These are really common. They can cause itching and abnormal discharge and pain with intercourse and pain with peeing and things like that. Antibiotics don't usually cause bacterial vaginosis. They might cause a yeast infection. It's been years and they gave me antibiotics for it. Maybe you can try a tampon dipped in plain Greek yogurt 
with some tea tree oil. First off, don't put tea tree oil in your vagina. This is a very caustic substance and your vagina is very delicate. I know where this comes from. The tea tree oil has been shown in studies to stop the growth of yeast in a Petri dish. That might be true, but that doesn't make it safe or okay to put in the vagina. Just don't do that. Don't do it. Bad plan. Stop. Stop doing that. Insert it at night with a panty liner on. A naturopath will give you a lovely shea butter vaginal suppository. Limiting your sugar intake and adding a probiotic will help as well. Maybe even take some oregano suppo su su <laughs> supplements. I thought it was oregano suppositories, but it's supplements. Like Jesus. Just throw the pantry and the refrigerator right in your vagina. It fixes everything. Does this actually work? If you put Greek yogurt on a tampon and put it in your vagina, will it fix bacterial vaginosis? The answer to this is probably not. There is some data that says maybe, but it's very uh, weak data bad methodology on the studies, we definitely have medications that will more effectively take care of this. There's actually a really interesting story behind this one, behind yogurt in general. It might be the very first documented viral misinformation health remedy that we have in historical documentation. This goes back to 1904. There was a biologist and he was giving a lecture somewhere in Europe, I think in France, and his name was Eli Mechnikoff. He actually went on to win a Nobel Prize later on in his life. He was talking about his theory that aging, like old age, is caused by harmful bacteria being overtaken in the intestines. Basically, Mechnikov gets up at the front of this lecture hall and he goes, Hey guys, because obviously at the time only guys could be scientists. I have a theory. Bacteria makes your gut sad and sad guts make you old. In that same lecture, he noted yogurt might help keep the intestines healthy by cultivating the good bacteria. At the time, yogurt wasn't really something that people ate frequently in most places. After he gave this talk, people were so impressed and it went on to become front page news in Paris where he was giving a lecture. After that, it started spreading rapidly around the world to the point of doctors prescribing yogurt to people for everything from gonorrhea to heart disease. Hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. That is actually actually how Dannon Yogurt Company got its start in the US in 1919. Dannon started their company based on this new uptick in people wanting yogurt products. It was also used in some situations for vaginal infections, but again, it was being used at that time for everything. Yogurt, the first viral misinformation health remedy. Talk to me about babies not breathing. It's my understanding that majority of infants requiring resuscitation are generally ones that have had highly traumatic births and high interventions. Home births, it is very rare for this to happen as far as I know. Can anyone educate me more on this? I had some people recently try to scare me with this. I have a whole video on this and I will link it in the description box down below. But in general, in the United States, and this data is on attended home births, meaning there's someone there that can help, not what this person is discussing, which is by yourself with nobody around to help. The risk of neonatal mortality for a home birth in the United States is three times higher than a hospital birth, and they are significantly more likely to be born with low APGAR scores, meaning need for resuscitation. The chances of needing resuscitation are equal to or higher at home, and even if they're equal, the outcomes are worse at home because you don't have anyone who can help, especially in an unassisted birth, and you only have one person with moderate training if you have a certified nurse midwife who can help. At the hospital, you have a lot of people, a lot of resources, a lot of ways to help. So even if they're equal, you're gonna have worse outcomes with resuscitation needs and no data on home birth in the United States indicates a lower chance of needing respiratory or resuscitation support for the baby. I think it's really important to consider the actual risks and benefits. And yes, the overall absolute risk of something going terribly wrong is really low. But again, if it's you, it doesn't matter how low that was because you have to handle it and you should know the absolute risk and the relative risk going into it. How much do you trust your husband? Enough to let him near your Volvo with scissors. Uh... I don't trust anyone enough to be near my Volvo with scissors unless they are a surgeon of some kind and I have a medical need for that to happen. My husband helped me and we got the stitches out of my labia. They were pulling so tight on one spot, it was making it all painful like a rubber band on a finger too tight. Fingers crossed it's better in the morning. Dissolvable stitches my butt. Okay. <laughs> Probably not the worst thing anyone's ever done, but it'd probably be a better idea if your stitches are bothering you to have your 
midwife or nurse or doctor take a look at them because that might be holding something together that needs to stay together. Refusing medication and having a possible miscarriage. Better ask Facebook. I had my ninth baby a year ago. I did not get Rogam at all, not during or after. I have gotten it with all other eight babies. I'm five weeks pregnant and bleeding like a period. My doctor wants me to get the shot. I definitely don't feel good about getting it, but please tell me why. Thanks. I, it will never, I, I, I understand maybe your doctor's real crappy. You can't ask them. Just don't ask Facebook somewhere reliable. This person is talking about being RH negative. So their blood type is A negative, O negative, AB negative, something like that. When you are pregnant with a negative blood type, if the fetus you are carrying has a positive blood type and there's transfer of that blood from the fetal to maternal circulation, the maternal blood sees that positive RH as a threat and makes antibodies to kill those cells. It's not a big deal in the first pregnancy, but the next pregnancy, the fetus has a positive blood type, you're still negative, and you still have those antibodies. Those antibodies cross through to the fetus's blood system, they attach to their blood cells, and they destroy them. So the baby has hemolytic anemia. All those blood cells, they get destroyed, and this causes significant anemia and can eventually cause high drops, which is where they start collecting tons of fluid in all their spaces around their body, because they're in heart failure. So just like somebody with congestive heart failure would get lots of swelling, that's what happens to the fetus. This is a very confusing topic. I will try to do a whole video on it with more explanation of how these things work and maybe some drawings and stuff like that. But the, the short answer is, if you don't get Rogam when you have fetal maternal blood transfer and you are RH negative and the fetus is RH positive, your future pregnancies are at high risk. So if this is this person's last baby, maybe not a big deal. But if they ever want to be pregnant again, it could be really, really dangerous to future pregnancies. Thanks for being here today, y'all. I hope that you learned something. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you. Click that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll see you next Monday.